I'm going to start off with a disclaimer. I think it's important for you to know that I do not have a wealth of experience with amps and DACs, let alone gaming specific products in this space. I currently use a shit hell 2E as my daily driver and it's the first external amp I've ever used with my Mac or gaming setup. I'm telling you this because this review probably won't satisfy the seasoned amp enthusiast or audiophile from an audio description point of view. I don't really understand things like timbre or how to describe the audio signature in relation to the Harman curve. What I do understand is usability, practicality, features and sound quality at a slightly above average person's level. So if you want to know how well the GSX-1000 second edition performs in those areas and also how it stacks up against something similar like the Hell, I got you covered. Okay, so with that out of the way, what exactly does this device do? The GSX-1000 second edition, which I'm just going to call the GSX, is an external sound card and amplifier with a built-in DAC that has been designed specifically for gaming. It's a complete plug and play solution, meaning you don't need any additional software. From a features standpoint, this thing is rammed with functionality. It's got a gesture activated touchpad, a separate chat volume dial, and separate chat and game audio streams. Additionally, it lets you switch between stereo and surround sound, EQ presets, output, side tone level, and reverb levels for 7.1 surround sound. So it does a lot for such a little box. Now, being the second edition of this product, there are a few key differences over the original GSX-1000. First off is that it no longer needs an additional power supply. It's powered by the USB connection, a big win from a cable clutter and power management point of view. Secondly, the sound path for the mic has been improved. In the older version, it was only 16 kilohertz and now it's 48. So party chat should sound significantly better. Finally is the new look. It's essentially the same design as the previous model, except that it's entirely black now, save for the lights and the touch panel. The Sennheiser logo is completely absent too. This thing is beautiful. It's so minimal and sleek. When turned off, it looks like a prop from a Blade Runner film, and when turned on, it looks super high tech. It's not entirely metal, the main volume dial is, but the outer housing is plastic. It's got a little bit of weight to it, so it's not at risk of getting dragged across your desk if you happen to tug a cable. You can lay it flat, or it has a little kickstand that tilts it at a slight angle to see the touchscreen better. Overall, it looks and feels like a premium product, and this extends to the packaging. I don't usually talk about boxes or do unboxings, but I think it's worth mentioning here. This is a beautifully designed product from top to bottom. Its looks are deceiving though. At first, it appears intimidating, or at least I thought so, but it's actually quite intuitive. The touchscreen will light up when you move your hand over it, and it will quickly dim so as not to distract you. Volume is displayed at the center with your other options spread around it, and these change depending on what you have active. Swapping between settings is fast, and for a UI that relies solely on icons to describe the options, it's surprisingly easy to use. Although, I'd still like to have some labels here. You can switch between EQ presets, the two outputs, and between stereo and surround sound with a quick tap of the touchscreen, and all of this can be done on the fly. The volume dial is so, so nice. It has this amazing silky smooth motion, and it links with the system audio on both PC and Mac. So using the dial will turn the volume up on your OS, and alternatively, you can change the volume on your PC or Mac, and it will be reflected on the amp. On the back, you have a 3.5 mm audio out for a headset or headphones, separate audio output for speakers, a mic input, and the USB-C input. The only issue with the design is that it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet. This mainly affects the touchscreen, and while this may frustrate some people, it's kind of unavoidable for a touchscreen device. From a sound perspective, the GSX isn't as impressive as the Hell. It doesn't sound bad by any stretch of the imagination, in fact I'd go as far as to say that it's impressive, but it does lack the same level of detail. It's also nowhere near as loud. Not really a big deal for my own use, but your mileage may vary. Although I don't think it sounds quite as good as the Hell, it does have way more features and customization options. It has a major ace up its sleeve too, 7.1 virtual surround sound. This is a literal game changer and something that very few gaming headsets offer. It not only delivers 7.1, but it's an excellent 7.1 at that. I've been a big fan of the Astro A50 for many years because of its virtual surround sound, and this thing blows it clean out of the water. Additionally, you can adjust how much reverb is present in the 7.1, so you can have an echoey cathedral-like sound or something much flatter. Beyond surround sound, there are four different EQ presets. Music, story, esports, and no equalizer, otherwise known as flat. 
Music was clearly tuned for more electronic music, or music that benefits from a deep sub bass, and yeah, it kicks pretty hard without losing much clarity. Esports makes the high-end frequencies more crispy to hear those positional audio cues, and Story sits somewhere between flat and music. And this preset might be better for non-EDM style music and cinematic games. Flat is my personal favourite because it's reasonably neutral. That said, I did abuse the music preset when listening to stuff like The Prodigy or Daft Punk. I would have loved the option to create a custom preset, although the four options here should cover most use case scenarios, and Flat should satisfy those who like their audio uncoloured. A massive advantage of this little black box is that it can turn any pair of headphones into a gaming headset. Yeah, it doesn't have a mic like a gaming headset, but it does support the addition of an external mic. If you already have a kick-ass pair of cans and don't need game chat, then this eliminates the need to buy a dedicated headset. If you already own a good gaming headset though, like the PC38X or the H6 Pro, then this will take them to a whole new level. I did a lot of my testing with the EPOS H6 Pro and they sound phenomenal when paired with this amp. I've recorded this section using the mic on the H6 Pro and the sound quality is infinitely better than what I recorded through the PS5's controller for my H6 Pro review. The only major downside to this product is its compatibility, or should I say, lack of compatibility. As of the making of this video, it only works with PC and Mac. I say as of this video because I'd love to see support for consoles patched in at some point. I know that wishing for third-party device support from Xbox is like wishing for ethical porn, but surely on PlayStation this is possible. My PS5 does recognize the device, it just doesn't play any audio through it. At $350 Australian or $200 US, it's not exactly cheap, although neither is a 7.1 gaming headset like the aforementioned A50s. You get a lot of features and customization options for your money too, and none of them feel like they are included to add bullet points to a marketing site. This is an excellent little amp that does a lot, sounds great, and adds minimal clutter to your setup. If it was compatible with consoles, then it would be an easy 10 out of 10, but even still, I strongly recommend the GSX 1000 Second Edition if you're in the market for a small solution to improve your audio, and specifically gaming audio on PC and Mac. <laughs>